All right, you can see the complete brackets for the state championship coverage by logging on to STOHD.com. It has the complete rundown of all the brackets from all the regions. And of course, our football championship coverage live in HD begins November the 30th. You can see it's 2, 4, and 6 on Friday, 1, 3, 5 on Saturday, all brought to you live and in high definition here on Sports Time Ohio. All right, time now to head out and get ready for your first round playoff games. Youngstown and Lima, they are up first. We head out to the Youngstown area. Dana Valish, the sports director from WFMJ, talking about Youngstown Christian, Warren JFK, Hubbard and Niles, Howlin and Chardon. And he joins us now on the Rebel Wireless Hotline. Well, we don't have rain, Dana. That is a good sign for week one of the playoffs. How are you? I'm very well, Mike. How are you? Very, very good. Let's start off with a 6-3 matchup in Division 6 Region 21. Uh, Youngstown Christian, it's a battle of the Eagles as they take on uh, Warren JFK. They were coming off a 10-2 season last year when they lost to Shadyside. Youngstown Christian is, and JFK lost in the first round last year to Mogador. Yeah, yeah and, and this is a matchup these two teams have never played. JFK is in the playoffs for the night. 19th time, Youngstown Christian, second year in a row. You want to talk about some offensive threats, those are these guys from the, uh, these two teams. Emmett Underwood, the fine quarterback, and Ryan Greer, the running back at Youngstown Christian. On the other side of the football, you got Alex Rossi, who's rushed for nearly 1,000 yards, and Robert Seeger, who does everything from his wide receiver spot for JFK. From there, we move on to Hubbard and Niles. You have a 2-7 matchup, Dana, in Division Three, Region 9. Uh, Hubbard's uh, last, uh, lost in the first round at the St. V in their last appearance back in 2010, and they've made the playoffs six of the last seven years. Niles, their first playoff appearance since 06. Yeah, and this is a rematch from Week 7. Niles was undefeated uh, hosting Hubbard. They're going to play it in Niles. They play, that's where they played Week 7. And Hubbard handedly handed Niles their first loss of the season, 43-43. Uh, of course, when you talk Hubbard, you talk Larry Scott, Darnell Tate, and Brandon Harb. In that first game, Mike, when they played, uh, Hubbard scored on uh, possessions or from 41, 45, 62, and 72 yards. So Niles gave up the big play. On the other side, Stefan Juhas, the first player to pass and rush for over 1,000 yards for Niles, the fine quarterback. This one could be a good one. It's going to be on natural surface, so it will be a little sloppy, but this could be a big one tomorrow night. Yeah, and you take a look at the brackets there and the game he's talking about. It's a 2-7 matchup. They'll get the winner of St. Vincent St. Mary's against NDCL, which is the 6-3 matchup on that other side of the bracket. From there, finally, a 4-5 matchup and a good one in Division II, Region 5. Howland takes on Chardon. We've heard so much about Devion Smith all year long and a chance to keep the Tigers season going at 8-2 and two as they go up against the 8-2 and two Hilltoppers. Well, you, you talk about it, Mike, and it's funny, I got a release from Howland today. Devion Smith has 1,751 yards rushing uh, this season, 25 touchdowns. He's the most prolific runner in Trumbull County history with more than 6,600 yards. He's carried the ball 732 times. Last week against Struthers, he scored on a run, he scored on a punt return, and he scored on a kickoff return. So special teams uh, for Devion Smith came in to play last week. He's a good one. If Chardon wants to advance, uh, they're in the playoffs for the first time, and I think in five years. If, if Chardon wants to advance, they're going to have to stop number four tonight from Howland. Yeah, and Chardon, of course, will counter with T.J. Beninati, their outstanding quarterback. Yeah, you're right, 06 the last time. Uh, they lost in week 13 to Nordonia. So Chardon back in the playoffs and with all the things that have gone on with that school over the last year. I know there's a lot of Hilltopper fans that are anxious to see how this one goes down. Dana, when does it all get started for Taco Bell Report tonight? We'll have the Taco Bell Overtime Report tonight at about 1120 and we'll be covering all of our local teams tonight in Ohio, whether they're in town or out of town. <laughs> Dana Ballish, thank you so much. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks, Mike. Have a great night. The sports director from WFMJ getting you all set from the Youngstown area and getting you all keyed up for week number one. From there, we head out to the Lima area. James Ryder from WLIO getting us all set up. Lipsick and St. John's, which be a great football game. St. Henry in Fort Laramie and Ada and Waynesville Goshen. And James is on the Rebel Wireless Hotline to get us ready for week number one of the playoffs in the Lima area. Hello, James. Hey, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. I, you know, Lipsick and St. John's, a 3-6 matchup in uh, Division 6 Region 22. And um, this is, to me, what a tough start for Lipsick, as good a season as the Vikings have had, to get the Blue Jays as battle-tested as any team in the state right out of the gate in week number one of the playoffs. What a matchup this is going to be. 
Yeah, absolutely. Both teams uh, actually look at this one like, man, how did we get this draw for our first game of the playoffs? Off of, of back-to-back losses to finish the season there. Liberty Benton, Macomb, two teams that are a combined 19 and 1. But when you look at St. John's, six straight playoff appearance. They went 14 weeks last year and lost to Marion. It, you got to think from both sides, if Lipsick can get past this one, they're going to be ready for round number two for sure. Oh, absolutely. If Lipsick's able to take take down the Blue Jays, I mean, they're, they're going to come into the rest of the playoffs and feel like world beaters because – Nobody beats the Mac in the playoffs except for the Mac. That's that's just the way things work. Uh, the Midwest Athletic Conference in the regional quarterfinal games a combined 43 and one against non-conference opponents. So I was like, 43 and one as a conference. The only loss was LCC taking down Versailles a few years ago. But you talk about Lipstick and how they started the season eight and zero. I mean, they were doing it on both sides of the ball, averaging nearly 40 points a game. They were giving up only six points a contest. But like you said, Liberty, Benton, and Macomb, two very good teams. Uh, things changed a little bit for them. They, they scored only about 16 and a half points, and they gave up 20 and 21 points. I expect a, a very similar style to Week 9 and Week 10 for them. And then you talk about the Blue Jays of St. John's. It, it, they just averaged a grinded-out game every single week. 21 points. Uh, they score. They give up 14 <laughs> I think if somebody's able to get 21 on the board, that'll be enough to win it. And last year, it would have been enough to win it. Uh, 28-20 was the final. St. John's uh, was the team to get to 21. All right, speaking of the Mac, St. Henry's the four seed in uh, Division Six, Region 24 as they go up against Fort Laramie, the 8-2 Redskins, 7-3. and three. It's a battle of the Redskins here. St. Henry, I mean, certainly battle-tested, as you mentioned. Losses to DSJ, Coldwater, and Mary, and you're about as battle-tested as you can be. But they come off a 1-9 and nine season from last year, and they have surprised a lot of people this year. Fort Laramie making their fourth straight playoff appearance. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Laramie, though, there's another one of those teams that – the Mac just gives them nightmares, and, and they have this, you know, hauntings uh, of those teams. I mean, they're three and three in the playoffs. All three of those losses came to Mac schools. None of the wins came against Mac schools. So, Laura, me really trying to get that monkey off their back. When you talk about St. Henry, the biggest thing for them this year is that they're healthy. The, the last two years, they've been banged up, beat up, and just had guys outside of Kyle Saul that were not able to suit up for them on Friday nights. This year is going to be a different story, uh, although it's going to start and end with Kyle Stahl at quarterback and also playing some defense for the Redskins. Uh, I, I think if he's able to get things going, St. Henry uh, will have a good deal of things uh, in week one here. Finally, a 1-8 matchup to finish things out. The Bulldogs at 9-1. and one. Aveda taking on Waynesfield Goshen, and Laramie was one of those teams that they beat back in week number five. Are they ready for the Bulldogs and that high-powered offense? You know, I don't know if there are many teams that are ready for Ada's <laughs> high-powered offense. I mean, you know, LCC was with them step for step, and Ada was right there. And, you know, we're talking one play goes differently, and Ada's the 10-0 and team, and LCC might be 9-1. and So, I mean, it, it's going to be a tough task. And Wainfield Goshen, I mean, this is the fifth time that they've been in the playoffs. They're 0-4 uh, in their previous four trips. Strangest thing in the world, it's the first time Wainfield Goshen has made the playoffs in an even-numbered year. <laughs> so maybe things are going to be different for them. But at 4-6, and six, I mean, <laughs> there's not many teams uh, that have ever had a losing record and actually been able to make it into the playoffs. Uh, the last one that I was able to find was uh, back in 2005, 4-6 uh, squad. Uh, in Division Three, making it to the postseason. Yeah, and they'll get the winner of Laramie and St. Henry, so that'll be interesting. James, thank you so much. Enjoy the dry weather for a change, and we'll talk to you again next week. Yeah, don't jinx it, though, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> James Ryder from WLIO getting us all set for the Lima area. And from there, we welcome our reporter Amanda John into the studio and talk about a team that hasn't been to the playoffs in, the last time, in, a, in a long time. How about Akron Ellett? The Orangemen are back. You had a chance to spend some time with them, and they're pretty fired up about this year's playoff run. And they should be. You know, for the second time in school history, the Ellett Orangemen are in the playoffs. They finished 8-2 and two and 7th in Division Two. Tonight, they'll have their hands full with number two seeded Kent Roosevelt. State playoff bound for the second time in school history. Last time in 1991, 
No one on the current roster had been born yet. Something special around here that we're definitely not used to, but we've been working hard all year and this has been our goal and it's nice to reach in. Well, I think it took a lot for this group of young men to get to the playoffs. Uh, first off, we started the season by beating our long-term arch rival Springfield 63-6. to And within 48 hours, I realized I made a mistake, a clerical mistake, and we had to forfeit the game. Fresh off the Akron City Series Championship, the Orangemen continue to make history in that they went 6-0, first time ever for this school. As we run into the fifth week of the season, we started the City Series. We had an easy game against East, they're not as strong. And then all of a sudden, we had Kenmore, Bookville, Firestone, Garfield, the big four all in a row. They were tough, close games, and it just seems that these young men would not be denied. For head coach Joe Yost, who has been with Ellett High School 34 years, as special as a playoff run is, it's not as special as watching his players grow up. I'm to the point now where I'm almost coaching grandchildren of the people I had when I first started coaching, and uh, it's been a tremendous privilege and thrill to be able to do what, what myself and the other coaches do for a living. I mean, we've seen generations pass through our program. At this point in our lives, to be involved with these young kids doing something so exciting is just fantastic. And after the crazy weather this week, they changed location three times, Mike, but tonight they will play at Kent State and Dick Stadium. Oh, I know the kids got to be fired up to play at Dick Stadium. That is going to be a special, special memory for everybody involved tonight. Absolutely. This is my favorite time of the year, playoffs. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. Much more to come here on the High School Football Show as we continue to move around the state and look at another team looking for their first playoff win. That's the Lions of NDCL. Will Ewick will have that story. <laughs> 